Hello everyone! Today I will be profiling some unusual bowing techniques for the violin. First I will start with a bowing technique called avec un oiseau, which is an old French technique that translates to with a bird and boils down to the concept that if your slow bowings on scales are smooth enough, the bird will stay. I will test this with my dear sweet Ringo. He stayed! I passed! Although a couple notes were off, admittedly. Okay, I made this technique entirely up just to get your attention. Avec l'un oiseau is not a real technique, so let's move on to some actual techniques that are verifiably true and are equally odd to the rookie violinists. I have placed some links as reference material for these links that I'm about to show you in the video description if you would like to learn more about them as well and some other techniques that are related to those. First I will show you Sulji and Chanterelle, which are quite possibly the only safe techniques I'm about to show you here today, and involve playing all the specified notes on only one specific string. Sulji means to play only on the G string, and Chanterelle means to play only on the E string. These are great for practicing position shifting, and if you were going to try it, I would start with an easier tune like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, since that's easier to hear out the notes and go slowly, as I did here in Sulji. about to show you some violin bowing techniques that are potentially risky for your violin and your bow. With these techniques, again, if you wish to try them, I would suggest using older instruments, junky bows, not using your best instrument to do it, and if you try them, you're proceeding at your own risk. I accept no liability. So, first in the wild world of bowing is Collegno with its two parts, Betuto and Tretto. Both involve using the bow upside down. That's right, we're going to be bowing with the wood. Many professionals use another object, such as a thinner wooden dowel that is similar to a bow or a junk bow to do this since it's a potential damage hazard again to the bow itself, and sometimes they just dub it in entirely to avoid risks to the body or strings as well if they miss their mark. So understand, this is a technique set to be done at your own risk, and I'm using a rougher looking violin of mine that's a bit older and more beat up from the spoils of time, and my $7 Amazon special bow. I will start with Collegno Battuto, or tapping and hitting the bow on the strings. This makes a xylophone-like sound. Next up is Collegno Tretto, or straight up bowing with the wood. As you're about to see, it's a very raspy and gritty sounding method. Next up in the world of risky bowing techniques is bow screw glissando, or holding the screw in a note position with the left hand while plucking with the right hand. You have to try to keep the screw in place, or you could also slide the screw around as desired to create a pinging effect. I would label, again this is risky since it's involving metal on metal wear, and the screw could also be a gouge hazard to your fingerboard, but here it is anyway. And finally, is a technique called chewing, or making a sound effect like your violin is creaking or a human actually chewing, and it was meant in performances to be a comedy strategy. 
To do it, you loosen the bow hair, then place the bow hair against the back of the violin and twist the bow around. I label this as risky as well like the others since grinding rosin and bow action on the back of your violin probably is not a smart idea for your instrument's finish, although it didn't seem to harm mine in any way. But just to be safe, I give you that disclaimer. See it in action here. I hope that you found that entertaining and informative. And again, if you'd like to research these techniques for yourself, check out the video description. I have a few links there that you can look at for those and other techniques that you might be interested in. And again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.